Hi friends and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. Today I'm going to be making Morticia Adams dress from the Netflix series Wednesday. I've really enjoyed this TV series and if you haven't seen it yet I totally recommend checking it out. I found that I identified a lot with Wednesday. Growing up watching the Adams Family, Wednesday was always my favourite because I was the weird kid. <laughs> and the characterization of Wednesday in this TV series, I've really enjoyed. Is it just me? Or was anybody else getting some just little possible neurodivergent vibes? I might be completely off base here, but to me, not very good with social situations and having special interests and stuff like that. Like, I very much identified with the character. But I want to do Morticia's dress for this video for two reasons. Firstly, loads and loads and loads of people are doing outfits that Wednesday is worn through the TV series. So I don't really feel like I've got much to add to that. There's already great videos out there for Wednesday. I'm also feeling that possibly age-wise, maybe I'm a bit more of a Morticia now, <laughs> which is not a bad thing in the slightest. I've gathered a load of images for references for this dress. Particularly, I was interested in the kind of silvery grey detailing that's on the front. This picture in particular I have brightened and it's brought out some more detail in there. So I'm looking forward to seeing how I can make that. Fabric wise I've decided to go with a stretch purely because I'm thinking for this detailing it looks like the fabric's been cut but it's fabric that doesn't fray. So stretch fabric is good for that. I also want it to be quite figure hugging. So again, I think a stretch fabric is going to work best for that. Construction wise, looking at pictures, it looks like it's a princess seam dress. And then with dramatic sleeves and with like the fishtail at the bottom. So shouldn't be too bad to put together. I am going to give it a bit of a train. I'm not sure if I'm going to make the train as long. We shall see. This definitely isn't going to be a dress that I can wear just out because it'd be trailing on the floor. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, so I have drawn up some pattern pieces using my basic blocks as a guide. I have made some alterations to them already. Main ones being making things a bit smaller because my fabric has got stretch to it and I want it to be quite form fitting. So what I've done is I've got my back piece and I have made the dart a bit bigger. Ignore this scribbling. I just for some reason decided that I wanted the dart to be a bit further to one side. And this was me working out how much bigger I needed it to be. But I think we're there now. <laughs> Luckily, I've got enough fabric that I should be able to make a mock-up as well, just to make sure. So what I need to do here is I need to turn this into princess seams. So to do that... I need to connect the top of this dart to the armpit area because that's the kind of shape that I want. So this is for the back piece and we're just gonna draw that like that. This is so curly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now what we want to do is we want to close up this dart entirely. So this is going to be my little side bit 
and then we're just going to cut this bit that off there. There we go, and this is going to be cut on the fold. And I'm just going to round out this corner a bit because I need to make a new bodice block because one thing that I've noticed is that I do have a little bit of excess fabric in this area here. So, and also my body shape has changed since I made the original block and I tried to alter it by just adding some bits in that were like, I think, a, a total of about three inches but it was uniform across everywhere and that's not where I need it so I do need to do a new bodice block but for, for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to smooth this line off and just get rid of this bit because I know that that's going to be a bit of excess fabric there So I'm just going to label this. I try not to write fast a lot of the time and that is because I am very 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 dyslexic and I just written Mortichal <laughs> and had to cross out the L because one of the things with being dyslexic if you're not familiar is your brain kind of skips ahead a little bit and it makes stuff up <laughs> basically so i'll be writing and i just randomly write the wrong letter and stuff so yeah i try not to write fast but sometimes i forget and yeah <laughs> right we're gonna do kind of the same thing with this but one thing we need to do is close up this dart here swing it into here so to do that, what we are going to do is just extend this, extend this, yeah, it is this one. All right. These lines are probably wrong. Like I say, I just adjusted my block without paying attention, so all my lines won't skew it. But this is roughly where the bus point is anyway. Right, so we're just gonna swing you close and take you down. And now we've got this big bit here. Same as we did with the back, we are going to connect this to this. And I'm just going to smooth that over a bit like that. The other thing that we need to do I probably should have done this before cutting this bit off, but it should be okay. I need to change the neckline of this. So I need to bring this down by six inches. And then we are making this kind of shape. And then let me just get my reference to see if this gets straight up. Okay, so it goes off the shoulder a little bit. So it's all kind of slant actually. So, I'm like that. So that is my new neckline.
I will do a mock-up of this just to make sure that this neckline is correct as well because the last thing we want to do is have too much have this too low cut <laughs> so this is the front this bit is cut on fold right now we are on to the skirt pieces again trying to work out where darts should be this is my back piece what i have done here is this is from a straight cut skirt pattern i made it taper in towards the knee it's just above the knee so it can be nice and fitted there because the whole thing with the shape of your classic morticia dress is you should look like you can't walk in it so we're going for that tightness and then this was originally two darts on my block pattern and I've made this into one dart. We're going to do the same thing and make this into a princess seam. So I am just going to draw a line down here and then we're just going to... Get rid of this dart altogether. And again, I'm just smoothing it off slightly. I don't mind that I know like some people will do this as being a straight line like that, but I don't mind too much it being curvy because if you look at the reference picture, it is quite quite curvy like from the waist like and then getting wider and um, there's some detailing that goes over the front of this bit as well right now that we have these pieces we need to lengthen them something else i'm not doing i know closet historian videos she puts steam allowance on all of her pieces. I am not. Purely because this pattern is generally for a non-stretch fabric to be fitting just nicely. A little bit of wiggle room. I want this to be form fitting. So I am not including seam allowance just so I get that little bit of like extra tightness. Anyway, what we need to do now, we need to make these longer. We need to do that fishtail flared bottom bit. So I need to work out how much extra I need to add. I'm going to have it floor length at the front and then with a the train at the back. Right, so I've got my bit taped on there. And you are the very front bit. This is cut on a fold, so this needs to be completely straight. And we are going down. Like 22 inches. And then we're going to start flaring out here. Now we're going to basically do the same thing. We're going to make sure that this line is the same as this line here. Same length. I did 
uh, the wrong way round, but it's okay because we can just make this line longer. <laughs> thing about pattern drafting is it can be complicated and it is very easy to get mixed up sometimes and there is absolutely no shame whatsoever in messing up. <laughs> right so I'm just going to make this a little bit longer. So... I'll make it four inches long. And then we'll get the French curve again. There we go, and that is the front panel done. Right, now that the skirt parts are done, the last part to do is the sleeve. What I've done is I have got my block sleeve pattern, cut it in half because it's going to be cut on the fold and then what we need to do is add on a bit here so we get that flare. I have measured, I'm going to measure again, yeah I want it to be at 9 inches so I'm just going to measure that and mark it on here. And then I'm going to stick this on here. Now I need to work out how long I want it to be. So I'm just going to measure down where it feels good and comparing it to the picture I think 16 inches is going to be good for me so what I'm going to do Looking at Morticia's, it's rounder. It doesn't come to a point here, it's rounded. I think I'm going to round this off. I think I'm going to have it come more like that. shape on that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to look more like in the picture. I could be wrong. But sewing is all about experimenting. Even if I'm wrong, it's still going to be an epic sleeve. Everything's cut out. What I need to do now is sew all my long seams together to make it into like a tube. I'm going to do something which I've not properly tried before I've had an experiment but I've not made an entire garment I am going to do it all pretty much on the overlocker this is because this is stretch fabric 
and from everything I've read, doing it on the overlocker helps to keep that stretch intact. I have had issues even when using a walking foot before with stretchy fabric. It sometimes leaves weirdness, areas where the tension isn't quite right and stuff. So I'll do a little test first and see if it works. And if it does, then yeah, I'll sew all those long seams on the overlocker. I'll probably do the sleeves and the facing pieces on my regular sewing machine. But yeah, hopefully this goes together reasonably quickly. I reckon the thing that's gonna take the longest is probably gonna be that detailing on the front. Right, the dress is pretty much completed. All I've got to do is add the sleeves, do some detailing and do hems and facings. For the detailing at the front, there's quite a lot of hidden stuff going on in there. What I've decided to do is draw the basic shape on some paper. So I've got this line which is following the line of the princess scene. I'm actually not going to use that line, I'm going to shift it. And then we've got two bits of fabric going there and then that middle bit, it's fabric that's been slashed going up and then twisted. So I'm going to do some experimenting. What I'm thinking I'm going to do is use this paper pattern as a base and then have a little play, tack some stuff down, see what works. I'll probably do the majority of the sewing of this by hand. The sun has decided to pop out and say hello. Hopefully it goes in a minute. <laughs> it seems like it's going. Yeah, so I'm gonna use this as a base, have a little play, see what works. I'll probably sew the majority of this by hand at first, just so I can see what's going on with the stretchiness of the fabric and then move on to doing it by machine. I made my paper patterns and traced them onto the black fabric. I cut little slits into the middle and then top stitched them to the dress. I then flipped each segment from the middle and stitched them down. This was by far the fiddliest thing I have ever sewn. I stitched up the inside of the sleeves and then attached them to the dress. Before going to bed, I had a little play with the paint. I decided not to include footage of that though, purely because I want it to be a surprise. Lastly, I hemmed the sleeves and the bottom of the dress. I decided to do a rolled hem on my serger for two reasons. Firstly, from zooming in, I think it might be a little tiny rolled hem on Morticia's dress. And secondly, it's a technique that I've never done before and I think it would work quite well for this.
I am so unbelievably happy with how this has turned out. It, it looks so good. <laughs> it just looks so good. <laughs> I'm so pleased with it. Usually when I make something, there's like a bunch of stuff that I'm like, oh, this could have been better, this could have been better, this could have been better. But no, literally on, on this there's one thing and it's the neckline here, but that is just because I forgot a row of stitching. There's supposed to be a row of stitching like down here and, there and down here and I just forgot that before doing the try on. But once I've done that, this will sit how it's supposed to be sitting. Everything else is just, ah, I love it, <laughs> I love it, I love it. The little bits down the sides, they're not exactly the same as Morticia's dress. Hers are a bit wider, but I think because of my body shape and stuff, the thinner ones look better for me anyway. I did do wider ones on the mannequin and it just looked too much. So I'm happy with how these little bits have turned out. As predicted, it is very difficult to walk in. I'm okay if I walk forward, but as soon as I start trying to go in any other direction, that's where things get complicated. <laughs> I'm very glad I didn't go with a train that is like the full length. I, it's a little bit shorter. It's still there. It still gives the desired effect. But yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to walk in, but it's possible. That is the important thing. It is possible. <laughs> the sleeves, I love the sleeves. Like, they're just great. Again, they don't look exactly like Morticia's. Like, I made a few little changes here and there, mainly through not being able to work out how something was supposed to work. But I love them all the same. This, they're just, they're great, they're epic, they're so big, <laughs> they look so cool. I do also like that because of like the weight of the fabric and stuff, they quite nicely like roll down to elbow length and like, yeah, <laughs> it's really, really cool. Overall, I'm in love with this look. I can't wait to find an opportunity to wear it to something because I am in love with it. Also, my little, I had a, a theory with padding, because obviously, the, you've seen me, this isn't my actual body shape. I watched a video by Minji Lee, and she was making a corset body, and I thought, I'm going to have a go at that, and I have made one myself, and what I have also done is worn my usual hip pads which I am going to do a video on hip pads for people with hip dips so keep an eye out for that if it might be of interest to anybody but yeah I've worn my pads and then I've worn some leggings over the top so that has just helped to kind of smooth everything off and give me the Morticia shape I do have some plans for some like really big projects that I want to do for 2023 so do keep an eye out for that. If you're not subscribed then please do and hit the little bell so you can be notified next time I upload a video. Doing all the other YouTube things, liking, commenting, it all helps you tell YouTube that you want to see more content like this. I'm also having a little experiment, making some little plans for things to do with my coffee account. A couple of things that I've got in mind are making patterns available. So for example, if you'd like me to make this pattern available, let me know. Also, potentially a link to a Discord. And releasing videos a day before on my coffee account so people who are interested can watch those early. If there's anything that you'd like me to do on there then do let me know, I'm always open to your input. That's it for this video, thank you very much for watching, YouTube is saying you might enjoy this video next and I will see you next time, bye!